Hey guys, Hafodet here, with a follow up to my input lag test video. I have a completely new setup and tested all the requests that were made last video, excluding controllers, but more about that at the end. After I released my previous video where I measured input lag, I had a couple of comments from people doing their own testing which is always awesome to see. But there was one that clearly stood out. The user Flippy199 had an oscilloscope to which he connected a controller and a photodiode which was pointed at the boost exhaust of the car. This is a very nice setup that works in any scenario, although it will obviously only test the lack of boosting. Of course, an oscilloscope can be many times more accurate than a 1000 FPS camera and he suggested that I might want to look into getting one. So I considered it for a bit, but 400 euros just for a good oscilloscope did seem like a bit much. Of course there were cheaper alternatives, but it wasn't quite clear whether they would be able to do things like automated measurements. So I got the idea of looking into Arduinos, which are basically small computers with analog and digital measurement pins. They are fully programmable, which in return also means that as long as the readings were precise and fast enough, I would be able to automate the process. After buying a starter kit and getting to know the basics of how the system works, I decided to buy an Arduino Due, a set of photodiodes and some more breadboards. The basic idea is that the Arduino sends a mouse click to the PC, although this can also be done with an external device, and it measures the delay between the click and the photodiodes changing their resistance. Since I'm using a lot of them, spanning the entire height of the screen, I can measure the first reaction anywhere on the screen. I can just click one button, go AFK and come back later when I have 5000 samples. Depending on the specific scenario, it might take quite a while though. Enough about that. You can contact me if you want more details on how to replicate the testing. What data did I collect? Of course, I didn't just want to redo the entire last video, since those results aren't wrong now that I have a better method. But I did have to get at least some reference, so I repeated my Reisenaga tests at 1000 FPS in-game and found a 1.2 milliseconds higher value than what I got with the camera. This is most likely just down to having the photodiodes wait for a bigger response on the monitor than what I used with the camera. Also, despite having 11 photodiodes, there is still some space in between them, which can increase the delay by up to 0.6 milliseconds. Then I went on to using the Arduino to click, which reduced the input lag by a whole 4.4 milliseconds proving that the Naga is far from optimal despite both devices being 1000 Hz. From then on I went down to 240 FPS, simply because even on a blank map it is quite tough to maintain stable 1000. With the increased amount of samples, the increase in variance at 240 FPS isn't important anymore. Anyway, the difference in average input lag compared to 1000 FPS was once again 5 milliseconds. At that point I decided to go through all the requests and open questions from the previous video. And I found a bunch of things that made no impact, which is mostly great. I tested whether having my second monitor connected makes a difference, and it didn't. The monitor is even 4K in my case. I activated the Discord and GeForce experience overlay and both of them made no difference. Even doing background recordings as well as active recordings with Shadowplay made no difference at all. I've heard that there are some cases where recording can reduce your frame rate, which will also negatively impact input lag. But if that's not the case for you, then you can record without worries. I retested the config setting one frame thread lag equals false because I had multiple reports of people claiming it has an impact for them. It certainly did not do anything on my computer and it sounds highly unlikely that it would still do on others. Either way, I am at the point now where I would advise against it in any situation, because any theoretical possible gain in input lag will hurt the frame rate stability. And I have tested an external tool called D3D9 Anti-Lag, which essentially allows you to do the same as the aforementioned setting used to do. 
However, it only works if you allow Windows full screen optimizations. And here is where I found the first interesting result. When this checkbox was disabled, I got 2 milliseconds more input lag with seemingly no benefit. 2 milliseconds is not much, so if you notice that you get more stable frame rates with full screen optimizations on, then use them. But otherwise, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want to disable them. Two more things that had absolutely no impact were using TeamSpeak and the launch option Allow Background Audio. One particularly interesting request was comparing graphics settings. Of course, when you're playing with VSync off, the graphics card will do a page flip as soon as the frame is done rendering, as I explained in episode 9. That means when the graphics card needs more time to render an image at higher settings, it's going to increase the input lag even with the frame rate lock. On my custom map with my GTX 970, the difference between the maximum and minimum settings was around 1.3 milliseconds. On a real map, this is likely going to be bigger. What is really interesting though, is which settings make the biggest difference. Because there are so many of them, I didn't lock all of these tests, but I double checked any difference that I found. 0.5 milliseconds came from the render quality setting, which basically changes the resolution. That is to be expected, especially on an empty map. But I also found Bloom to add 0.5 milliseconds, which seems rather high, because you wouldn't expect that to require a lot of performance. Either way, a difference that small seems rather irrelevant, if only input lag is affected and not the performance. The rest of the difference was split across the other settings. Something I missed out on in the previous video regarding VSync is the ability to reduce the input lag that it causes by capping the frame rate 1 FPS below the monitor's refresh rate. If you want to know the technical reasons for why this works, then I'll leave a link to an explanation in the video description. With this method, I found the input lag to be equal to fast sync at the same frame rate. I also found out that there is an AMD equivalent to fast sync called enhanced sync. This means there are plenty of low lag vSync solutions on any system if you can't stand tearing. Last, but certainly not least, I need to talk about car input lag. When I first tested it with my new fancy Arduino setup, I found about 8 milliseconds higher input lag for the car than expected from the previous tests from patch 1.41, despite the engine reaction being exactly the same. But I don't like jumping to conclusions, so the very first thing I did was to get out the high speed camera again and I made sure that my new test setup wasn't at fault. But I got the same result. What I've been doing for my tests is driving through a wall while looking backwards. The spawn point is chosen perfectly to make sure that boosting will instantly put the camera on the other side of the wall. Due to the setup, I wasn't quite sure whether the measured difference was just because the camera was delayed or the actual car. I am of course using one stiffness. So I went and did some hacking to teleport the car as soon as the button press is detected by the engine. When I did this, I got the input lag down to the number I had in patch 1.41. This tells me that teleporting certainly has no camera lag and that the visual frames are still using the most recent physics frame. To make sure that my problem wasn't caused by the car moving too small of a distance in one frame, I decided to make the car teleport upon any movement. Because I'm teleporting after I'm already detecting a movement, all these results had of course one more physics tick worth of input lag. This caused me to get a total of two physics tick extra input lag compared to 1.41, which already proved that the act of boosting took one extra physics tick to move the car. The amazing thing about this new test is that it also allows me to test things other than boosting, and I got some interesting results. Regular acceleration also had a delay of one tick, but jumps did not. I also tested turning, which had no delay in how fast the angular velocity of the car changes, but the actual angle that the car is facing was one tick delayed. So it seems that to calculate the change in angle, 
the angular velocity of the previous tick is getting used. Finally, to confirm the difference that I found and to test the other values, I rolled back to patch 1.41. What I found was that the boost lag was indeed lower, but all the other things were the same as 1.44. Why slash how this happened, I have no clue. And I'm also not sure if this has happened since patch 1.43 or 1.42, as I did no testing on patch 1.42. Alright, at the beginning of the video I said I was going to talk about controllers. I haven't tested anything related to them so far, but I have a plan. I have decided that I am going to buy all the popular controllers there are to do a comparison between them. This is only possible at all because of the amazing support from my patrons. However, taking all my expenses into account, this is actually going to put me at a loss of money. But I have some savings and I am confident that investing in the future is the right thing to do. If you appreciate this kind of testing and have some money to spare, then I highly appreciate any amount of support. In case you want a controller that's not on the list tested, then you can suggest it on my Discord and if you or other people are willing to give me one-time donations that cover the cost of the controller, then I'm willing to test any of them. This comparison isn't going to be the next video, but I'm obviously not gonna announce it and then wait half a year either. To stay up to date about this channel or any unlisted changes that I find in the game, follow me on Twitter or join my Discord and I'll see you in 3 weeks for the next video.